Welcome back to Cars of Queens. Today we have an exclusive look at this 2011 Chevy Impala 9C1 police package. Now this isn't just any 9C1. This might be the lowest mileage 9C1 in the entire country, maybe even the entire world. This car is 3,900 original miles. And just looking at it, you can tell that this is not just any 9C1. It's super clean all the way around. It was tucked away for many years and used as a shop car and not for patrol, which explains the low miles. Of course, you know, it's what you'd expect out of a 3,900 mile car. It's hard to believe that this even exists uh, from a police department. It's just so immaculate, so nice. And uh, you can get the chance to own this car. It's going to be up for auction on cars and bids. 9C1 dates back all the way to the 80s and is most famously used on the 91 to 96 Caprice. But not too many people know that there was actually an Impala variant of the 9C1 for many years and was actually the last W body car ever produced. The Impala 9C1 spanned from 2000 to 2016 over two different body styles. And this is the final revision of it though some updates were added in 2012. So on the 9C1, you get heavy duty steel wheels. These are 16.5 inch wheels. You get a trunk keyhole, which was specific to the 9C1. And you get factory dual exhaust. Another thing to note is that this particular car is equipped with mounts for ballistic protection. This generation Impala was introduced for the 2006 model year and soldiered on all the way into 2016 as the Impala Limited, as we mentioned before. This car was the last car to be built on GM's W body platform, which was their full size sedan platform for many years and underpinned a number of cars, including the Pontiac Grand Prix, the Chevy Impala, and the Buick Lucerne. The funny thing is, unlike other police cars offered by Ford and Chrysler, the Impala 9C1 is actually based on the LS trim, meaning you get a host of features that you wouldn't get on a Crown Vic or even on a Ford Taurus. The Impala 9C1 comes standard with dual power seats, automatic headlights, cruise control, as well as a six speaker stereo system with a CD player and an auxiliary input. The interior of the 9C1 differs from the regular Impala in a number of ways. Now these rubber floors are easier to clean and don't wear out as much as, say, a regular carpet would. So with the police package Impala, the rear windows are inoperable from the rear switches. Now they work from the front, but unlike a Crown Vic or a Taurus, you can't re-enable them. They're permanently disabled. Also, in many cases, you'll find that the lock plunger is also missing on these cars to prevent people from escaping, obviously. Another really cool thing about the Impala 9C1 is that it has a certified speedometer, which means the speedometer is 100% accurate. That's a common feature among police package cars. As you can see, just 3,918 miles, shy of 4K. Furthermore, the Impala 9C1 was only available with a column shifter. The Impala 9C1 also comes standard with rear vinyl seats. Also did have a dome light, as many police cars do, but it was removed by the department when it was retired. Some other cool features in the interior is that this car includes an auto down driver window. Lights everywhere. Another really cool thing to note about the 9C1 is that the front door hinges have added supports, as you can see right here, these stainless steel supports. And this is because a lot of times, Cops tend to swing the doors open on these cars and damage the front fenders. Even with these added supports, these cars still tend to get messed up pretty badly from the doors being swung open. So these seats are also heavy duty. They have heavy duty frames and they also have a center mounted crush box under this center console thing here. And that is for the instance in which this car gets into a side impact collision. This car is ice cold AC. We're standing out here sweating filming this video and we've got it kicking right now and it's just awesome. And of course the heat works well see that line this car is so close to new that the outline for the window sticker is still here check that out incredible
that is what a nice healthy Impala should sound like, folks. Awesome. So under the hood, we have the 3.9 liter V6. The regular Impala came standard with the 3.5, and of course you had the SS, which had the 5.3, but the SS got discontinued after 2009. 2011 was the last year for this 3.9. After this, they got a 3.6 liter. The 3.6 is much faster, but just like the Crown Vic, the same mentality applies where the 3.9 is sort of detuned and is kind of lazy but lasts a really long time. Just an example of the 3.9 being detuned. When this car came out in 2006, the 3.9 had 242 horsepower, and by the time it reached 2011, it was only making 230. So if you're looking for a fast car, you're not going to get it with the 06 to 11 9C1. You're going to want to get a 2012 and up. Mechanically, there's a lot more that sets the Impala 9C1 apart from its civilian counterpart. The cooling system is heavy duty and is borrowed from the SS. Alternator is a heavy duty 150 amp unit. Heavy duty police calibrated brakes all the way around. It has an increased ride height compared to the standard Impala thanks to the heavy duty suspension and heavy duty front struts. The car also comes equipped with heavy-duty external coolers for the engine oil, power steering, and transmission fluid. Transmission is also a heavy-duty 4T65E HD unit shared with the Impala SS. In 2012, it would be replaced with a six-speed auto. Take a look at the refrigerant capacity sticker. You have the little police logo and you have a taxi logo as well as the blank one which signifies the civilian so the police and the taxi package impalas apparently have less capacity of refrigerant than the civilian which is pretty interesting i didn't even know that a taxi package existed for this generation now moving on to the driving portion of this video the impala is a very soft car it's a very smooth car of course not as smooth as a uh, crown victoria but it's it's nice it's in i would say it's in between the taurus and the crown victoria if you know what i mean the taurus they don't really have a uh, front suspension but this one is very soft it's welcoming makes a lot of noise as you can hear it kind of reminds me of my oldsmobile silhouette believe it or not just the way it drives and how how soft it is and like the handling it's very reminiscent of you know older gm products which i like about this car a lot the seats are very comfortable it's a nice place to be in you have plenty of space a little bit of noise not too much it's it's a little bit rough on some of these rougher patches but overall it's it's pretty nice This thing really packs a punch, guys. Even with 230 horsepower, it's no slouch. It's not sluggish as at all for a police car, especially. It's very, very nice. Could you believe this, guys? We're in the middle of New York City. Look at this. Wow. This is one of my favorite uh, on-ramps to the highway. We're actually in Mexico. The Mexico Police Department over here. car just sounds so nice it's so smooth has a nice engine though yeah definitely it picks up and it goes it pulls it pulls i'm not gonna lie it does pull of course the impala with the 3.6 pulls way harder but this is this isn't bad this is pretty good for uh just regular driving you know if you're not doing anything crazy this car is fine it's really smooth no complaints with the ride you know, this car isn't intimidating to drive. Like, you hear it's a police package car, you think it's fast, or, you, you know, some people would be afraid to drive it. But this drives just like a regular car. It feels like a regular Impala. It doesn't It doesn't feel any different than a regular car. It, it, the suspension is a little crashy here and there, but it's really not bad. On smooth surfaces, is a great, road trip cruiser i've taken these cars on cross-country road trips i've owned a number of them and they really just drive so nice they're uh they're a pleasure to drive and i guess that's why so many rental car companies had them one thing i will note is that 
the uh, column shifter takes some getting used to, but once you're once you know where it, everything goes, it's it's easy. One thing that's actually cool about this car, mentioning the column shifter, is if the battery's dead, you can still shift it. Unlike the Crown Vic, you have to uh, have battery power in order to shift the thing into drive or neutral. I feel like in a lot of scenarios, the Crown Vic sets the benchmark. Everybody knows what it feels like, what it looks like, how much power it gets. So it's it's easy to uh, compare another, say, cop car to a Crown Victoria. Now, while this might not be a Crown Vic in a lot of ways, it is more modern in more ways than it isn't than a Crown Vic. So something that's really cool about this car is that it has four grab handles. You don't see that a whole lot. And the Crown Vic has none at all. And this is four all the way around. And I really like these. That's something I really, really appreciate about this car. And that concludes our review of the Chevy Impala 9C1. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know there isn't too many videos out on these. Not a lot of people uh, care for them. I'm sad to see this one go. Of course, you're never going to find another one with 3,900 miles, but it is going to make room for more cars. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff along the way as it is. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.